Hey, and welcome to uh, not only a new episode of What the Heck is Steve Talking About, but a whole new semester as we move into uh, fall of 2021. Um, today, we're going to go over some uh, pneumatic fundamentals for Mary Romero's uh, 436 class. Uh, we're going to do that here in the lab at the Intex Center and uh, really just going over a couple basic things and uh, a little bit of uh, you know, direction on the trainer here behind me. And uh, we'll get you guys ready to, uh, to come in here and do some of the stuff yourself. So, uh, so let's get this thing plumbed up. All right, so today what we're gonna go over is, uh, it's related to your Amitrol uh, learning system that you've, uh, you've been assigned there online. Um, and I'm looking at my paperwork here. It looks like we are doing uh, what we call chapter two or module two in the Amitrol training for this um, 436 pneumatics class. And, and actually where I'm gonna start is um, uh, skill five and I'm going to plumb up to uh, figure 5-1. And I'm going to uh, post this schematic uh, here on the video in a moment. Um, so you can see exactly what I've got plumbed up here behind me. This does, in fact, follow the, uh, the diagram of 5-1. And uh, so take a moment and study that and see what we've got there. Um, you can see where we've got the uh, regulator uh, built in. Um, and, uh, and of course that goes in with the, uh, the gauge, the pressure gauge, uh, and then to the main manifold. And once we come out of this, the, the, the manifold, we then plumb in our own um, pressure gauge that we can look at here on the trainer. And then it goes into our, uh, our directional control valve. Um, and this directional control valve um, does two things. Uh, in one position, you can see it goes up and it controls a, uh, a cylinder there with a uh, uh, it, it's actually a one-way cylinder, so really we put pressure into the, the back end of that cylinder, and when we um, relieve the pressure, it will uh, reset itself with the internal spring. And this diagram shows us that. But on the DCV, if we, uh, if we do it the other way, move the uh, lever the other way, we're going to run a pneumatic motor. Uh, and we've got both of those here on this trainer. So, uh, so let me turn the camera around for a second. I'm going to show you a couple things. All right, so as I mentioned uh, at the beginning of the video, we are today at the Intech Center. I'm going to show you here in the lab room uh, is our main air inlet. And this comes from an air compressor in the basement. Uh, there will be a video uh, later on in the series where I think I'm going to go down in the basement and show you the air compressor and the components that go with it and how all that works. But ultimately, that uh, compressed air is plumbed up into this lab room and uh, comes in here to our, that's our main shutoff valve. The air is shut off to the room. We turn, turn it that way and the, the air is turned on. Really why I'm showing you this is because I've set this regulator, to, this controls the whole room and you can see I've set uh, the pressure to 80 PSI. So that means no matter what you do in this room beyond this regulator, you're not going to get any more pressure than 80 PSI. And, uh, and I'll show you that over here on the trainer. Okay, so what we've got here now is another um, regulator. Uh, this one's built into our Amitrol trainer. I can zoom out a little bit there. Uh, and, and remember a moment ago, we, uh, we saw that the pressure was regulated to 80 PSI on the wall. Well, that really means no matter what we do here, um, if we turn this air valve on, now we've got air pressure coming into this trainer. No matter what we do, we're never going to get this regulator to go above 80 PSI because we're limiting the whole room by using that regulator there. So what that allows us to do here is to, um, we can fine tune any uh, uh, regulation of the air here. Um, and we're going to try this out in just a second. And I'm going to get it down to a, uh, a working pressure. So let's go down to, let's say, uh, 40 PSI. How about that? Now keep in mind, you guys are coming, most of you are coming out of a hydraulics class, which use this same trainer. Uh, and remember, back when we did those uh, labs, uh, you know, we were using hydraulic fluid pressures of 200, 300, 400, sometimes 500 PSI. Um, with pneumatics, it's a little different. Right now, we're going to make some things happen here 
and we're regulated back to 40 PSI. So if you remember on the uh, schematic that I posted, um, here is uh, that schematic plumbed up, uh, coming into our directional uh, control valve here. Um, and it's plumbed up to a pneumatic motor. This is our, what we call our, um, it's our one-way uh, cylinder. Uh, that means we really only control it one way. We put air into it to extend the cylinder. Once we relieve the air pressure, the spring inside here is going to make it uh, retract. So I get it, it looks a little different than the cylinders we're used to. Uh, but for training purposes, this is, this is the uh, cylinder that, that we're using. So, so let's give this a shot. Um, if you, if I uh, move this lever uh, one way, you can see that that rod is extended. Now I'm going to let go of the lever, and it's going to retract all on its own because that spring is making it come back. If I activate the rod the other way, that makes our pneumatic motor run, right? Now when I let go, both of these items are it's a neutral position, so neither one of these uh, is being activated. So let me do this again. I'm going to push down on this lever, and you can see that rod comes out. I let go of the lever, the rod retracts. I push up on the lever, and the motor runs. Okay, so, so let's do this. Let's put some more pressure in here. You know we started this at about 40. Let's go up to uh, 60. Again, we know we're never going to get higher than 80, right, because we're regulated over there. Uh, but let's see what happens here. Well, that comes out a little bit quicker, doesn't it? A little more, a little more force behind it. What happens with the motor when I push up? All right, see that's got a little more, it's got a little more umph to it now, doesn't it? So, uh, so let's try this one more time. We'll, we'll go all the way. We'll go up to 80, because that's the most we can get here. And let's see what happens here. Well, that cylinder really extends, doesn't it? I'm gonna let go. And uh, look at that air pressure bleed off, and it retracts, and let's check our motor. And that's got some real speed to it now, doesn't it? So anyway, there we go. There's the first part. Uh, that, that was uh, schematic 5-1, uh, and I've got one more I'm going to show you. So, uh, so give me a minute to get it plumbed up. All right, so, so I've got it re-plumbed uh, up here. Um, we're still in uh, module 2 uh, of your... Uh, online Amatrol training, uh, except now I've replumbed it to figure 5-3. And uh, I'm going to post that here for you to take a good look at it. So, so as you can see, it, uh, of course we start out with the, uh, the internal regulator and the, the pressure gauge and coming out of our manifold. Uh, and then I plumb right into a, uh, a pressure gauge. Uh, but there it splits off. It goes from the pressure gauge to the uh, manual um, uh, push button DCV, which is hand operated, right? And you're going to see me operate that with my hand in a moment. Uh, and that goes out to, uh, to another pressure gauge. Uh, and then it goes on to the, um, the single acting cylinder, uh, which we call cylinder number three on this trainer. Uh, but when you go back up to that T, um, you can see that it goes on to the um, same DCV we just used in the previous example, and that's, uh, that's plumbed into a double acting cylinder, uh, right? So, so on the first uh, diagram, 5-1, we only had the single acting cylinder. We could only uh, pressurize it one way. In, in this one, we're going to pressurize this cylinder uh, both ways, to extend the rod and to retract it. So, uh, so let me uh, turn the camera around here and, and show you some, some stuff. Okay, so here we are. We've got uh, uh, our first gauge, uh, like it shows on the diagram, coming out of the first gauge here, and that's where we go into the T. Um, one, one side of the T feeds the DCV, which operates that cylinder, uh, but the other side of the T comes over here to this uh, manual directional control valve, right? So, um, this then also goes off to another gauge there to give us operating pressures there. And it's important to note um, that we have, uh, we've plumbed in a, a vent for this valve. Um, this is just a piece of tubing that really vents to atmosphere. Um, that, that's all it's for. 
Um, so that's when we extend the, uh, the rod here, that's great and fine, but when we let go of that button, that air's gotta have somewhere to go. And this directional control valve uh, will vent that air out to the atmosphere through here. So let's give this a shot. We've got, uh, we've got our air turned on. We're only set to 40 PSI. Again, we're still regulated uh, to 80 PSI by the, uh, the main regulator on the wall. Uh, but let's see what happens here. When I actuate this DCV, right, we've got the rod goes both ways. And that's what we're doing here. If I go up, it goes out. When I go down, it comes back, right? Pretty simple. And that gauge up there is telling us exactly what's going on in this part of the circuit. And you can hear it venting out of these vent holes in the DCV. Those are uh, indicated on the, on the diagram by a faint dotted line. Okay, fair enough. But independent of that, right? Because we plumbed into the T, this manual switch, I can push on this manual switch and make that rod extend. Now when I let go of the switch, the rod's going to uh, retract. And you can see the, this tube moving because the air is exiting through there. I'm going to push that button again and then it retracts. So let's do the same thing. Let's turn this pressure up and see what that does for us. Uh, let's go up to 60 PSI and see if we notice a difference. Let's check out the cylinder. Oh, all right, that seems to be moving a little bit faster, a little, little more in tension, right? And then let's try our uh, manual DCV. And sure enough, that rod seems to come out a little bit quicker. So one more time, let's take this guy up to 80 PSI, which is the maximum we're going to get out of it, right? Because of the, the main regulator on the wall. Let's see what happens here. Now you can really hear the air now, right? This guy's doing some work here. And then we're going to come over here to our manual DCV. And that rod just comes right out. And look at that. Now even our exhaust tubes got a little more, getting a little more excited about it, right? Because we've got more uh, pressure uh, coming out of it, more air, more exhaust air. And, uh, and really that, uh, that's the end of that diagram, right? Simple, but uh, we've really got two different uh, units um, running off this. Whereas the first diagram, 5-1, uh, we could operate one or the other, uh, but in this case here, um, they really, they tee off here and, uh, and they're really kind of separate of each other. So there you go. All right, class. Well, there you go. That's, uh, that's a nice short one for, uh, for uh, our hydraulics uh, 436 class. Uh, we've, got, uh, we've got more videos coming at you uh, to get you acclimated to what's going on here in the lab room. Uh, I'm real happy about getting you guys in the lab room this semester and uh, we got a lot of cool stuff to go over and we get to play with the machines and, uh, and make some thing ha things happen. So, uh, so yeah, it's all good. Um, so thanks for watching another episode of what the heck is Steve talking about?